That's all. So we're just now massaging the output aesthetically by using these disparate format codes. Well, let's see if we can't do something a little more interesting than just print out these letters. So this is not a complete implementation, but it is a demonstration of a、uh, game that you might recall known as Battleship. So, Battleship, remember, actually, even if that sounds cool, you're going to be very underwhelmed in a second. So, if I make Battleship, And then run Battleship, that's all you're getting today. So we have the layout of a Battleship board. This is that like, little game with the plastic board that's got all the holes. You put the pegs in and the little fake ships, and you say A2, and you sunk your Battleship. That kind of game, if you're unfamiliar.、Um, if, uh, yeah. So <laughs> I just realized how stupid I sounded saying that. So with Battleship, we have this opportunity, though, to format this output in a little interesting way, right? I clearly want a grid of some sort. And I also need to be careful with like, the number 10, because all of a sudden my grid could get screwed up because all of a sudden I have a two digit number. So just to see how we did this, let's scroll up to the code here. It's starting to look more complex, but it's just a repetition of these same constructs from before. So I'm first going to print the top row of numbers. So I print out backslash n, space, space, space. And I just figured that out, honestly, by trial and error. I wanted a little white. Space, and then I want to indent the board a little bit. What do I do next? I want to print 1 through 10. And so here I have percent %d again and again. And notice a couple white spaces after each for aesthetics. So that's actually pretty straightforward. But now here, notice we have our first example of a nested loop, whereby I have an outer loop where convention says use i as your counter. So i is 0, go up to 10, i. plus plus. Notice now, what do I want to do? What am I doing here? Percent %c. So remember, the output of this screen did this for me. I had all the letters of the alphabet on the left hand side. Well, what am I doing then with this percent %c? That's how I'm getting every letter of the alphabet. Let me put, scroll this back here. Why am I doing A plus I? This feels a little weird. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I want to change the letter I'm printing on each iteration by adding one to it again and again. So, A, I know, is going to be represented by some number. It happens to be 65. It turns out that even though in the previous ASCII examples I was explicitly casting, you actually don't need to explicitly cast. C and the compiler are smart enough to know that a char is an int, and an int is a char. The, at the end of the day, the only difference is how you interpret those zeros and ones. Now, how am I going to interpret these zeros and ones here? Well, printf is going to print a character. So, it doesn't matter if I pass in a char specifically or an int, it's going to be displayed as a Character. So I can now use this shorthand notation of start with the letter A, capital A, whatever that is, plus I to it, which initially is going to be 0. So what's A plus 0? It's just A, because it's 65 plus 0, 65, and it's printed as a char, so it's A. But on the next iteration, I is 1, and then 2, and then 3, dot, 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 25. And so in this way, can I increment even letters of the alphabet from A to Z. Now, notice this in,、uh, nested loop, so to speak. Nested in the sense that it's indented in inside of the outermost curly braces. So J gets 1, J is less than 10. What is this doing? This is just printing out 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So, what's really going on here? This is actually a very common example of using two nested for loops. If you want to print out rows and columns, you essentially need two loops, generally four loops by convention. And so the outermost loop is doing what? Iterating from right to left or top to bottom? So, it's actually doing top to bottom. So, the outermost loop involving i is top to bottom. And the innermost loop is doing the columns. And you can infer this again because if I'm printing the holes by using this lowercase o, that's happening inside the loop. And this makes sense because if this thing's like a typewriter, you better start from the top and go right, 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 right. Because the moment you go down, that's it. You can't go back and add anything to the previous line, as we discussed earlier with backslash n. So the outermost loop i is essentially going to iterate over our. Rows, but on each iteration of a row, we want to go dot, 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 dot from left to right to generate all of these zeros. Now, this is not by any means a full fledged game. It's just the aesthetics of the board. And the very last line is just to print out some blank space. But it does demonstrate now how we can nest these kinds of things. So, perhaps a little more familiar,、uh, a little more familiar is this example here. So, you might recall this incredibly annoying song from. 
uh, grade school as well, or school bus rides. So 99 bottles of beer on the wall. 99 bottles of beer, take one down, pass it around. 99 bottles of beer on the wall. I also felt stupid saying that. But there's the song that you might remember saying is from childhood. What's nice for our purposes today is that it's obviously very cyclical, which uh, contributes to its uh, annoyance. But it's also an opportunity to decrement this number again and again and again while still doing a lot of the same thing at the same time. So let's see how this might be implemented at the end. If I make beer one and zoom in on this and hit enter and then type beer one, it's going to prompt me for a number. I'll say 99, enter. It's a pretty fast implementation of this song, right? We could make it really tedious by inserting. <laughs> We can make it really tedious by inserting sleep or something like that. But if I scroll up, I've indeed started all the way up at the top, 99, and counted all of the way down. So let's just see one way in which we can do this. So let me zoom in on my code. The very top says, how many bottles of beer will there be? And then I use get int. So this is kind of uh, old, old hat now. Now here's a common convention. If the user does not cooperate, you could pester them again and again. But I decided just uh, as a design decision, mm, if the user is not cooperating, I'm just going to quit. And if you want to quit a program in C, you return a value from main, and you should return anything except what? Zero. zero, right? So zero generally means success. And that should be returned by default at the end, or if explicitly by you, if all went well. But if something did not go well, like the user was just not cooperating, you should probably return something other than zero. And the convention is at least return one. Or if you want to really have fine-grained control, return one for the first possible error, two for the next, three for the next, but anything other than zero. Now, if I don't return, I keep executing. So if the user did give me a positive number, I start a singing this song. And how might I do this? Well, notice how we might structure this with a loop. So I'm first going to just print out a new line. Then I'm going to iterate from i equals n down to 0. So we did this before with our progress bar. And I'm going to print out percent %d bottles of beer on the wall, i, percent bottles of beer of beer, i. Take one down, pass it around. That's just the same thing. And now notice here, here's how I go from 99 to 98. Then the loop repeats. Then the loop repeats, dot, dot, dot. But this is far from perfect. Where are some opportunities for improvement here, would you say? Yeah. Yeah, this is really me cutting more corners, right? And this is me avoiding the issue that at some point this program is going to get down all the way to the bottom and say one bottles of beer on the wall. And I didn't want to look like I'd made a bug, so I just parenthesized the S for 98 other conditions just to say, oh, now I'm handling both scenarios. But clearly we can do this better. We could have some kind of condition inside of this loop and say if I equals equals one, print it as bottle, otherwise print it as bottles. What else could we do? What's that? OK, so we could have the loop just go down to one, and then special case, as we'll see, the last chunk of this uh, song, and just print out verbatim one bottle of beer on the wall, or zero, whatever the lowest case is that you might want to include. Any other thoughts? So you could even be a little more efficient than instead of conditionally spitting out one sentence or the other, you could just special case the S, print out the singular, and then just print out the yes optionally, yes or no. So if I go back in here, let's see, beer, uh, one, uh, the biggest number we can represent with an int is roughly two billion. Oh, damn it. <laughs> All right. That's a command line argument. More on that next time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, why don't we leave it there and we'll see you on Wednesday.